Hi, this is Aaron with uh, Anderton's TV. I'm here with Antoine from uh, Arteria, and we're here with the first uh, Matrix Brute in the country. It's the first look at the synth, and we're going to give you a quick overview of it and uh, a few sound demos as well. Uh, it's worth mentioning from the start, this is the prototype. It's the first in the UK. And uh, yeah, let's start from the very, very top. So yeah, um, a bit about the synth, first of all, from Antoine. Thanks very all right, much. hi, everybody. So introducing the, the Matrix Brute, indeed very uh, powerful upcoming mono synth uh, that we are releasing end of the summer uh, it's already uh, on pre-order and uh, let's have a look at the layout of, of um, the synthesizer itself so it's a three oscillator synthesizer with two uh, oscillators that are coming from the brute family um, those are m exponential uh, oscillators with multiple waveforms that you can mix inside the oscillator so you have two of these which uh, in total represent eight waveforms um, and uh, a third oscillator which is a linear oscillator more of a classic design with uh, four waveforms uh, which you can pick uh, one uh, from so in total you have nine waveforms that you can mix together uh, to create your your sound generation and you can top that uh, with a noise generator with four different types of noise and an external input which can be uh, sent to your signal path, be it a uh, line or instrument. Um, all of this is then processed into a filter stage. Uh, this filter stage is a dual filter, so you have a uh, Steiner Parker filter which is very similar to the one found in the Mini and Micro Brutes. And you also have a ladder uh, filter, which is a very classic analog filter design, which you can find on many uh, synthesizers, uh, many famous synthesizers out there. Um, so that's for your audio chain, which is after being processed by um, modulators, envelopes and LFOs. Uh, and a matrix that we'll come back to in a minute you uh, is then routed to analog effects and uh, I'll stop uh, on that for a little while because analog effects for me is a it's, a it's a big big deal you don't normally get analog effects on a synthesizer at this price point I mean even other competitors above this price point um, you know since released over the last sort of two three years you don't get analog effects on them you know since well into the sort of above two thousand pound price point you, you don't get analog effects you get digital effects so that's a that's a big big deal but, yeah, yeah and digital effects are usually yeah. the ones that you bypass yeah, straight away when you're firing up the unit yeah, so. usually you just completely ignore them <laughs> so yeah that that analog effects section is quite interesting indeed uh, the unit comes built in with an arpeggiator and a sequencer step sequencer that goes uh, up to 64 steps uh, sequences and um, you have many performance controls uh, that are at your fingertips and that are totally customizable. Uh, so very easy to route your, uh, your mod wheel to different presets or to use these knobs uh, right there, uh, white knobs next to your keyboard and assign them to any parameter of the synthesizer. And you finally have an uh, FM section that allows you to to create very complex uh, sound uh, by uh, using frequency modulation in between oscillators and filters. Another great thing about this as well is um, obviously with most mono synthesizers you're not getting a, a, a really large key bed on this. You've got a great 49 key keyboard on here, it's complete with aftertouch which you would expect at this price point and the build quality of this unit, obviously you can't see this or feel this through the camera but the build quality in this unit is really superb and the whole thing is made of really great quality wood and it's really really high quality uh, metal the whole unit as well, it feels extremely solid so uh, yeah if build quality is really second to none on this unit it's extremely good the layout is extremely intuitive i mean today's the first day that i've seen this synthesizer and i've just come out to it and it, straight away you know exactly what you're doing with it the only thing that can seem a little bit daunting is the the matrix section of the synth which we'll come to in a second but once you actually have a look at it and you see the controls the way that they laid out on the actual unit itself it's actually really really straightforward everything is laid out extremely intuitively for you um, right down to the sequencer. I mean, the actual step sequencer, the way that this thing is laid out, really, really straightforward. It's actually an incredible breakaway from the step sequencer you get on most mono synths um, at this price point. It's really, really easy to use. Just finishing on the um, 
on the hardware part of the unit, if you if you like, you you have a, a tiny uh, built-in screen there, which is a e-ink screen. It's not an actual screen display. Um, this is part of the philosophy of the unit because the, this unit was built. Well, th this pro project was built around the idea to create a very powerful analog synthesizer without any menu diving uh, functionality. So we tried to make it and laid it out such so that, that it could really achieve a lot without any complexity. Um, that is for, the, for the, the screen part. Another thing that I need to stress about the philosophy of the unit, of this, this matrix brute, is that it has um, that extra range that is uh, very typical of the, the other mini and micro brutes. That means that uh, we actually decided to leave an extra uh, range available on all of the parameters so that you can really like tweak this, the sound the extra mile and make, make sounds that are uh, bigger and, and more aggressive. Um, so this is part of the character of this family. Now, uh, if you want to achieve uh, very lush and, and round sounds, this is possible as well. All you just need to do is dial in values that are not uh, all the way up to the, to the, to the, the top of the, the possible range. Um, because this is what we believe users needed, is uh, more, more uh, range, really. Uh, one last thing we'll cover before we go into some of the more in-depth pieces of this is uh, some of the back panel features of the actual synthesizer itself. Um, we do have um, 12 CV gate outputs on the actual synthesizer just on the back panel here. Um, so for any of the Eurorack fans out there, this is completely syncable with all of your um, Eurorack gear as well. Um, so this will hook straight up with that. Um, USB um, interfacing is completely um, syncable with this. Um, so there is a librarian editor that will be um, dispatched with this um, on launch. Um, so this does have an um, onboard preset memory of 256 memory locations, um, but uh, that is expandable, um, obviously, with the librarian that will ship um, on dispatch. Um, so you can obviously expand that via a PC. It does have MIDI I.O. on there, as you would expect, um, and there are um, inputs for expression and sustain pedals, as you would also expect. Um, stereo inputs for audio and, um, yeah, everything as you would expect. And one... Um one thing that is overlooked on the rear panel of the, yeah. the matrix brute yeah. is actually the insert. The uh, so it has an insert that is, uh, if, you are, uh, if you have a TRS uh, insert jack, you will be able to route the audio signal of the matrix brute in all of your effects pedals. So that's great for, for people who carry a, a bit of effects uh, with them. They can root them and interconnect them, interchange them without having to unplug the master out. It's very handy if you want to try out different combinations. Yeah. So uh, I think next step we'll have a look at up here is obviously the just press start left to right and work our way through uh, right. uh, uh, some of the more uh, in-depth um, features. So um, shall we look at the VCOs and work our way through from there? Yeah. Yeah. So the VCOs, let's just start with a fresh uh, patch so nothing happening here uh, I'll just uh, let you listen to the various waveforms so every this is VCO1 we have a, a sawtooth and each waveform comes with its um, dedicated parameter so sawtooth comes with an ultra saw parameter we have a pulse with a pulse width parameter and we have a triangle a triangle which comes with a metalizer that's crazy very acid metalizer it's a feature you get on um, the other brutes as well it's a feature common of the the brute family the metalizer is yeah quite popular with them handy feature is the key hold so you can operate hands-free and so I can show you the last waveform, which is the sub oscillator. That you can combine and have it either in a sine or a mix of pulse. Groovy. 
Okay, so that's the oscillator one. Oscillator two is very similar, so I'll let I'm just blending it in. So right here we have two triangles. We could add a pulse or another sub. we have oscillator 3 which is the linear oscillator with a choice of four different waveforms so that is for the the oscillators i'll just focus quickly on the on the noise uh, so the noise comes in four different flavors um, so we have a white noise, a pink noise, the red noise, and a blue noise. Those are uh, based on different uh, filtrations of different uh, noise sources. So each one has its own character and is very handy uh, to combine it without using uh, of filtering. Yeah, it's quite nice to have that just straight there on the box. Obviously, typically on most sims, you'd only get sort of the standard white and pink noises on there. So to have the access to the, the, the red and the blue noises just on there on the box, it gives you extra options um, sonically. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an extra feature to have on the box. It's quite nice. It's all right. So moving on to the filter section now, and we will be listening to uh, the two filters and their characteristics. So first to the Steiner Parker filter, and we'll be dialing a Sawtooth uh, wave into it. So just to, to, to have a, a listen. So the Steiner Parker comes in with four different modes. So low pass, bound pass, high pass, and a notch. And uh, we'll listen to those. So the low pass. Bound pass. A high pass. And finally the notch, which allows for some phasing effects. <laughs> so. So both come, uh, um, the, the, both the filters comes with um, two uh, different slopes. So you actually have a 24 dB slope, the very smooth slope we've been listening to, and you have a quicker 12 dB slope, which is very smooth as well. Very nice. And so the, the Steiner Parker filter uh, is is famous for. Uh, uh, as implemented in the brute, uh, is famous for the, the brute factor, which is basically a feedback loop for the, for the resonance, yeah. which creates very wild effects if applied with, with resonance and, and combined with resonance. So to handle with care, but <laughs> very useful indeed and we have a, a, a much uh, smoother drive parameter which yeah, it's is far more time yeah yeah it's far more time than the brute factor um, but uh, yeah you can use them in conjunction with one another to uh, get some really interesting effects um, yeah let's move on to the second filter all right so I'll just um, uh, route my waveform into the other filter so you have here in your mixer the choice of routing it, uh, your waveforms into one the other, both or none of the filters. So I'll just route it now to the latter filter. So we are here in low pass and I'll just remove the effects. Yeah. A 24 dB slope, low pass. Very nice. Bound 
band pass and a high pass. So typically the the ladder filter will come with a lower level of output. So if you're using both, you'd, you'd rather turn down a little the Steiner Parker so that the levels are even um, because uh, it's part of its characteristics. Now, it also comes with a brute factor, which can be pretty wild. And with its own uh, drive parameter as well. Yeah, which again you may want to use to compensate for this being a lower level than this, but again you've got outputs on both to compensate for the levels, so you can mix between the two, and again you've got mixed parameters on here. So there's, there's ways to compensate for the level difference between both um, filters being different in level, but it's, you know, it's your choice. The great thing about these um, filters is that they can either be combined in parallel or they can be rooted into one another, so the Steiner into the ladder. That's the serial mode, and so here we have a combination of low pass and high pass, and so actually creating a band pass uh, filter uh, in the combination of two filters, uh, say fighting each other, and. Um, which is great and which can uh, help you achieve great tones as well. And customize your, your band pass yep. really. So the big knob right in the middle of the two filters is a master cutoff. This one will offset the position of both filters. So using it will allow you to, to if, if here we have a low pass fed into a band pass, into a high pass, sorry, we'll then able to offset this uh, custom made band pass filter, which, uh, which is great, very handy. And you have visual feedback of the position where you are because having three um, cut off yep. parameters can, can be, get confusing <laughs> can be slightly confusing so that's why we've added uh, the visual feedback where you are and uh, from there uh, we have all the modifiers so we have three envelopes and two uh, LFOs actually three LFOs because the third uh, VCO can be used uh, as an LFO uh, yeah which is a really box. really cool section obviously this third oscillator being its own LFO and is just a really really cool option on there as well and that's you know can be rooted by the matrix as well which is just a really really cool option as well that's so maybe we should uh, get going uh, on on the on the matrix yeah. so for the mo for for example at the moment we have one uh, oscillator only uh, in, in this patch we could use the uh, the oscillator 3 the third VCO uh, as a LFO to modulate the pitch of my VCO. So basically what I'm going to do is just selecting a source on the on the left side and picking a destination on the upper uh, row and here I'm selecting VCO1 pitch and I route it to my LFO3. Select and dial in an amount of modulation and here I can manage my waveform and my, my division. So that's as quick as it gets for the VCO3 LFO. And that's how slow it can get. So this um, modulation matrix is literally the possibility for you to pick any source on the synthesizer and route it to any destination, or almost uh, any destination. You, we have uh, added four custom uh, destinations. Uh, so these are the ones that will be uh, displayed on the on the e-ink uh, screen. And the way it works is simply that you press the button, 
select whatever parameter you want to to automate. So maybe the the time of your uh, delay, and you'll be able to route that to any source on on available on the on the matrix. So here I've I've been assigning my delay time to my LFO one, and. So yeah, your, your delay is being managed, delay time is being managed by an external parameter. It's very, very, very interesting. And you have many ways to use that and to custom build your your own yeah, tone. Yeah, patches around that, yeah. It's really, really cool. So, shall we listen to a bit to the effects, maybe? Yeah, let's, let's move on to the effects section from there. So our effects, uh, so we have um, five uh, effects which are based on uh, bucket brigade delays so those are analog effects as we as we said so we have a stereo delay we have a mono delay which can achieve longer tails uh, we have a chorus we have a flanger and we have um, something that is close to a reverb um, but is based on on uh, on bucket brigade delays so it's it will create uh, spa space um, illusions, well, sp space effects uh, based on the on the on the delay. So here is a bit of the stereo delay. Very nice sounding. Very very lush. In mono, we can have a bit of a longer delay. We also have a chorus. as well. A flanger. So all this is achieved with actually one single waveform out of the nine that are available on the synth and using one single filter. And finally, the um, reverb effect. Which gives you a bit of a space impression, yeah. and it's, uh, it comes in handy. So it's just opening the synth up, basically. It's, it's, it's not an enormous reverb, you didn't want more space on it. Um, you know, you, you could add a, um, you know, an external reverb unit, but uh, I would say it's much warmer sounding than what you would get from you know, a digital reverb on another synth. Uh, the effects are definitely more usable than the built-in digital effects that you get on a lot of other units that you just tend to bypass. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a harken back to the usable effects of the, you know, the, the analog synths that you got in the, you know, the 80s and the 70s where they were actually usable. These are usable. These are the kind of things, kind of things that you are just going to stick on there and use. Lastly, um, we should um, take a look at the the built-in sequencer, yeah. which is uh, both an arpeggiator and a sequencer. The arpeggiator is very straightforward. It's it's basically. It's very simple arpeggiator with uh, all the parameters you need at your fingertips. So you have the ability to have notes, triplets, 
dotted notes, different time divisions, quarter, eighth, sixteenth or thirty second uh, note. And you have different orders, rever uh, reverse or well, up and down. You even have a random uh, mode for bigger chords. Yep. <laughs> and uh, you also have then, a, well, a good thing, both on the sequencer and the arpeggiator is the, the gate uh, parameter available on the, on the pot, yep. which is very, very nice. You don't have to, to mess with your envelopes to have very, very small gets, gates. But so that's that's for the arpeggiator uh, on the sequencer. Uh, so the sequencer puts the matrix to another use, and the, those th this use is a uh, is actually displayed here on the on the right side. You have um, actually four blocks of sixteen steps, uh, making it a sixty-four step sequencer with uh, step accent, slide, and a mod parameter for each uh, step. Uh, mod being a sequence uh, with values, which is then refed into the modulation matrix as a yeah. source here on this row. Um, so the way it operates, the sequence is very straightforward. You just, you can dial in some rests uh, as well. So you have your sequence running. You can have it run either in forward, reverse, any in random as well. You can select the length of the sequence. So for the moment, it's running on 16 steps. You could have it run on only eight. Very intuitive, very easy. Uh, the to layout use. is really, really good on there as well. It's, it's very, very easy to see what you're doing, as opposed to some of the other sequences that you get on other mono synths. Um, you know, where you've got a really small layout on the, the bottom left hand corner of the synth, or you've got a really small screen where you're struggling to see what you're doing. It's, it's a great big display, and you know, the fact that you've got four of them, it's, it's great. and tweak so lastly I think the uh, audio modulation uh, section is very interesting as well because it, it's it allows you to to well take your whole sound to, to a whole different level uh, thanks to the frequency modulation yep. so basically what we have here is VCO1 modulating uh, VCO2 uh, which by the way can be a uh, hard sync Uh, you have a VCO3, uh, which can modulate either VCO2 or VCO1 here. You have VCO3, uh, can, which can modulate your filter. Very crispy now. <laughs> or you can have your noise modulate. Filter or your oscillators. So this this allows for a, a whole new range of sounds that can be achieved with this machine. It's very yeah, it's, nice. This is essentially where you sort of flip things on its head. You sort of reverse a lot of what's going on in the actual you know sense section. It's really really handy. The fact that you've also got the three envelopes here as well is a really really handy feature. I mean can't be overstated how flexible this actually is with regards to sculpting the sound. Really, really useful. You know, this audio mod section which we just discussed is extremely flexible as well. So, you know, these two things, the amount of flexibility you get with regards to sculpting a sound overall, 
extremely useful. Um, yeah, it's you know, really, really handy as well. You know, the three LFOs, obviously, LFO 3 is you know, hard synced to uh, the third VCO. Um, but LFO 1 and LFO 2, the fact that you've got three of them on board, really, really useful again. So you've got a, a really large range of um, sonic possibilities with this synth. Um, you know, there's a lot you can do on board with it. So, yeah, it's a really, really good mono synth. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a mono synth for, you know, 316, definitely. Everything is, is synchronizable to the sequencer, so everything can be synced together, either your effects or your LFOs. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, I didn't stress the mod the modifier here, the macro knobs that we can use to to control basically. Here, rooted to the pitch of the oscill all oscillators, we could have it rooted to to many other destinations, including custom destinations. You can have your effects controlled right at your fingertips. It's basically four more mod wheels that you have here. Um, yeah, definitely performance control, but really, really handy to have, obviously, if you don't want to sort of continue coming up to the matrix to tweak things, and you've got preferred, you know, obviously, controls that you want to have, you've, you've got those definitely on board. Um, one thing was what I should say about preset management is obviously that, um, I guess, guessing they're handled by the matrix up here is massive dialed on board for that, and, and they're going to be handled on here as well. Um, but yeah, um, I think that covers pretty much everything we want to talk about on board. One last thing worth mentioning about this uh, synthesizer is it being a mono synthesizer. It can as well turn into a paraphonic uh, synth. So it has three oscillators, which uh, and each of its oscillators can become a note and allow you to create chords. So uh, uh, with three notes. So the, the you are going to be able to switch from monophonic to paraphonic mode and also into a duo split mode, which will allow you to have either ones of your filters on, on uh, different parts of your, of your keyboards. Uh, you will be able to set up a split point and have two sounds on, uh, on each end, one sound for each hand, so th that's very handy. The paraphonic mode um, is not implemented on this unit yet, but you can um, basically uh, use your, your three oscillators as a chord. The thing with our oscillators is as we have two exponential oscillators and one linear, uh, they could become uneven when, when played together. Yeah. If you have four waveforms on the first one, three waveforms on the second one, and one single waveform on the third one, it could make uh, an unbalanced uh, chord in the end. So you can... Um, you can uh, how to say uh, deal with it with the mixer section where you can uh, obviously uh, tune your 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 levels uh, together, and definitely would make a, a, a better balanced tone to have only one waveform on each oscillator, so you yeah. have a better balanced chord in the end. Yeah, obviously it's worth mentioning though that uh, the units that will be shipping, uh, they will have the paraphonic feature when they dispatch it. It's just this unit that doesn't have the paraphonic feature, so we can't show it today. And um, yeah, I think we've got it pretty much covered. Uh, there, there are many other things that we we could speak about. We could actually speak about this unit for the whole day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, keeping it, it uh, as short as we as we can. I think. Yeah, I think that's um, yeah, that's the main features we want to talk about. Uh, well, uh, thanks very much, Anton, for coming in and speaking about the synth today. Uh, now you've come a long way, I'm all the way from France to speak about the synth. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, yeah, thanks for it. Yeah, thanks for listening, and see you next time. Yeah. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you.